This is the new 2022 Ford F-150 Lightning, and it's a fully electric pickup truck. The electric truck world is on fire right now between the Rivian R1T and the GMC Hummer EV and the upcoming Tesla Cybertruck. But the F-150 is Ford's entrant into the electric truck world, and today I'm going to take you on a tour of it. Before I get started, be sure to check out Cars and Bids, which is my enthusiast car auction website for cool cars from the modern era, now with free listings. You can list your car and auction it for free on Cars and Bids. And we've had some great sales recently, including this 996 Porsche 911 Turbo, which sold for $52,500. This fantastic Jeep Gladiator off-road modified looks awesome, which sold for over $70,000 and this beautiful BMW 850i V12 and a manual transmission sold for $36,000 with no reserve. If you're looking to buy or sell a cool enthusiast car from the modern era, the 1980s and up, Cars and Bids is the place to do it with a great selection and daily auctions at carsandbids.com. So let's talk lightning. I mentioned some of the other electric trucks, and they're all pretty insane. Fast and crazy looking and expensive. The F-150 Lightning is a little bit different. It's essentially just an F-150 that's electric. Maybe not as exciting as a Hummer EV that can crab walk, but a lot more familiar to consumers and a lot less expensive. The F-150 Lightning will start around $40,000 when it goes on sale next spring, compared to the Rivian R1T, which is going to start just under $70,000, and the Hummer EV, which will start around eighty-five, dollars and the Tesla Cybertruck, which just keeps getting delayed. But the F-150 Lightning is pretty capable for its price point. Four-wheel drive is standard, and the base battery level will do 230 miles on a single charge, or you can upgrade to a version that'll go 300 miles between charges. And there's a lot of power to get. The F-150 Lightning comes standard with around 425 horsepower and an amazing 775 pound-feet of torque. And you can bump the power figure to around 565 horses. Towing maxes out around 10,000 pounds, and Ford says this will do 0 to 60 in around 4.4 seconds, making this the fastest F-150 ever. And today, I'm going to show you the rest. I can't yet drive the F-150 Lightning, but I can take you on a thorough tour of one of the most hotly anticipated vehicles on the planet and show you all the quirks and features of Ford's electric pickup truck. So let's get started. All right, I'm going to start the quirks and features of the F-150 Lightning by discussing the powertrain, except this truck is electric and this isn't the powertrain. Instead, it's a front trunk. You press a little button on the key fob and this opens up automatically and electronically revealing a rather large front trunk in here. You finally have a trunk in a pickup truck, which is always a complaint point for pickup truck owners. They go to the grocery store, they don't want to put their stuff in the bed, have it roll around. Well, now you have a bed and a trunk in the electric F-150. And as you can imagine, this is a lot cooler than just being a front trunk. For one thing, it has 14 cubic feet of space, which is pretty good, about the size of a trunk in a normal car, and it can hold up to 400 pounds. So it's pretty useful and usable, and there's more to it than just that. For one thing, you have charge ports over on the side of the front truck. You can see them here. Several different household-style charge ports, plus a couple of USB-style ports as you can see, and this little bluish button here turns it all on. So you plug something in and then press the button and it starts charging from the front of your F-150 in your new front trunk. And check this out, those power outlets on the side, they even operate while you're driving. So if you want to charge like a tool while you're driving between job sites, you can plug it in here, drive along, and it will charge. Although Ford does say it's reduced charging capacity when you're driving and moving in the truck compared to when you're stopped. 
Next up, another interesting item. The front trunk is large enough for golf bags, two of them in fact, a point that Ford makes clear with this little graphic on the underside of the trunk lid showing two golf bags. A little Easter egg under there reminding you that you finally have a secure place for golf bags in a pickup truck. Other interesting front trunk related items may be wondering, well, what happens if you park like on a steep hill? It looks like stuff will just roll out of the front trunk, but there is a little trunk lip here. You can see about an inch, maybe a little bit more to make sure that stuff doesn't roll out. Ford tells me that's the same standard that they use for their tailgates. So if it works in the back of Ford vehicles, it should work in the front too. You also have a little extra storage area in the front trunk. You can lift up this little panel and you can see additional storage under here for extra privacy and for smaller items if you don't want them to get damaged while they're rolling around, even in the front trunk. This little extra storage compartment can also hold this truck's charging cables. So you have a space for that in case you don't nowhere else to put it. And a couple of other interesting items worth noting in the front trunk. For one, you have this little button over on the side with a light on it. That is your light switch. You press that to turn on or off these lights mounted under the trunk lid so you can illuminate what's going on in the trunk when you're rooting around trying to find something. Also next to this little light button, you have this little button surrounded in yellow. That is your emergency trunk release. If someone tries to kidnap you in their F-150 Lightning, you can press that button in order to get out. Although it might be a little dangerous to climb out while this thing is in motion because, you know, you're in front, not in a trunk in back. Seems pretty scary, but it's there. And one last interesting item with the front trunk, there are many different ways that you can get in here and access this front trunk. I already mentioned the key fob has one, you press a button and it pops open, but there's a lot more than that. There's a little button to the left of the steering wheel, you can press that and that will open the front trunk. You can also go into the screen and open the front trunk in there if you want access. And there's also a little button under the front grill. You slide your hand under, you press it, and it opens up just like a tailgate in most vehicles. Well, now you have a tailgate in front and so it opens in a similar way. Ford also says that Lightning models equipped with this little keypad on the side, this cool little thing where you enter a code and you can unlock your doors. If you enter your code and then hold down the five button, that will also open your front trunk. So there are many different ways to get in here, which is probably an indication that Ford thinks a lot of people will be using the front trunk in their F-150 Lightning. And of course, it's all power operated. And when you're ready to close it, you just do one of those things I mentioned before or tap the key fob and it comes down automatically and closes so you don't have to pull on it or grapple with it or whatever. It's all pretty easy. But there's a lot more to cover on the outside of this truck and up front than just the front trunk. For one thing, there is a light bar. You can see this light bar stretching the entire way across the front of this truck. Light bars are the new industry trend for symbolizing the future with part of their design. And this truck includes it as well. Interestingly, Ford told me the light bar is always on. So it acts as sort of a daytime running light, but it isn't actually bright enough to meet the daytime running light standard. So the trucks actually have to have an additional daytime running light in markets that require them like Canada. Instead, the light bar is really just more for show and for style and to distinguish this from a regular F-150. And it's the same situation with the tailgate. You can see back here, a light bar going across the tailgate, something that standard F-150 models don't have and something that distinguishes the lightning. Although it's worth noting, the light bar in back is not always on, at least right now. Ford told me they're thinking about making it always on for the production version, but right now it only lights up when you have the headlights on. This acts as a tail light in back, but it is still a cool and distinctive design touch. More interesting back here in terms of lighting is the reverse lights. The reverse lights are here, right in the center of the tailgate, these two large white light strips that light up when you shift into reverse. Nothing too unusual about that, except what happens when the tailgate is down? Your reverse lights are no longer visible. Of course, Ford thought of that. When you put the tailgate down, these lights appear, previously hidden in the brake light clusters are your new reverse lights that now appear and become your reverse lights when the tailgate is down. Put the tailgate back up and these extra reverse lights are hidden because your normal ones are back in their usual spot, which is kind of a cool integration of reverse lights. 
And by the way, speaking of lighting back here, worth noting that even the brake light cluster assembly is completely different from a regular F-150. When you go to put on the turn signal, the whole thing turns on and lights up, as you can see. Similar to what happens on a regular F-150, but the design is completely different and distinctive to the Lightning model. So that'll be one of the ways you can tell it apart when you see one of these on the road. And by the way, speaking of lighting, the F-150 has a cool feature called zone lighting, where there's a series of white lights all around the truck that allow you to light up stuff when you park. So for instance, you pull into a dark campsite and you're trying to figure out where to set up, you can stop the truck and turn on your zone lighting and basically use it as a lamp to see where everything is. The cool thing with the lightning is there are more zone lights. Ford has added some on the back of the running boards. As you can see on both sides, you have additional zone lighting here and these reverse lights in back have a dual purpose. They're larger than before and so they can give you more zone lighting illumination in case you need to see what's behind you in the dark when you're parked somewhere, you can turn on zone lighting and then your reverse lights will light up the area and make it easier. And next up, also around back, another interesting item back here is badging. For one thing, you can see this badge on the tailgate with like a lightning bolt and then an American flag. A couple of interesting quirks with this badge. For one, the lightning bolt is actually hollow. Ford told me this was intentional so that no matter what color you get your lightning in, that color actually appears on the lightning bolt that's on your lightning. You can also see a little blue trim in this badge. That is mirrored on this badge on the side of the bed. You can see it says a lightning back here. And again, there is blue trim around the side of each letter. Ford calls this electric blue because of course they do. It fits in with the electric truck. You can also see in this lightning badge that the T is a lightning bolt, which just drives home the point. This is the lightning and it's all about electricity. And next up, still outside the F-150 Lightning, we move on to another important component, and that would be charging this vehicle, specifically the charge port, which you can see right here on the front fender on the driver's side. Now you'll notice it also says F-150, and it also gives the trim level of this truck, in this case, the top of the line Platinum model. Now interestingly, you can see over on the passenger side, there is another charge port, but that one is a dummy. It's just there for style and for symmetry, and to also say the model name and the trim level, like you'd expect seeing it on the fender of an F-150, but on that side, it doesn't do anything. Only on the driver's side is it actually a functional charge port door. But anyway, you open it and you can see that's your charge port, pretty basic. You also have this little circle, which turns out to be a progress light meter. And so as it charges, these lights will light up one by one to indicate how much charge the truck has. The Mach-E also has this feature and it's kind of a cool thing to see. Now, one especially especially important item with this truck and with its charging system is that you can use the truck as a giant battery to power your house in the case of a power outage. Your power goes out and the truck, if it's plugged in, will automatically start supplying power back into your house going the other direction. You gotta have an inverter. The system has to all be hooked up and work properly, but it can happen and not just theoretically. This truck can power a house. Ford says a normal average size American house, like four bedrooms for three days. And they told me privately that's actually a conservative figure. If it's a smaller house or if you kind of conserve power, you could get more than a week's worth of household usage out of your truck's battery, which is a pretty cool thing. This is basically a giant generator in case of a power outage. You could use it that way. Pretty neat. And next we move on to the bed in the F-150 Lightning. Although I have to say, there's not too much that's new or interesting or exciting in the bed compared to the standard F-150. And Ford says that's by design. They wanted to keep the bed pretty similar so that if you had like accessories, cargo dividers, a camper shell, whatever, you didn't have to get a new one just because you got the electric truck. They wanted to make this fit with anything you might have for your regular gas powered F-150. But anyway, on to the bed. To get in here, first you open the tailgate, which is powerful operated. You can tap the key fob and then it opens up automatically, which is a feature of standard F-150 models as well. In addition, you also have the cool stuff that Ford has put on the inside of the tailgate, which is a ruler. So you can measure stuff while you're on a job site. You have it in both inches and metric. And there's a few other things in here too, including a little holder for pens, which could also come in handy. And of course, this truck also features this cool and very useful step system into the bed where you pop out the 
little panel on the top of the tailgate. You press this button, it comes out and it's a step. And you can use this little piece that also can pop out and it becomes a railing. So you can use the step and the railing to easily climb into your bed. Trucks have gotten so big, it's hard to get into the bed these days, but with this stuff, it makes it a lot easier. You can just climb in here and grab whatever you need out of your bed, which is pretty nice. But the big difference between the bed of the F-150 Lightning and the bed of most pickup trucks is over here on the side, the driver's side, you can see a lot of different outlets over here. You have regular household style outlets and also a 240 volt outlet over here that you can use to power pretty much anything. Ford envisions people powering construction tools on a job site when they don't have easy access to power, but that's what you can do using this truck. And Ford says that a regular job site with eight, 10 people can power all of their tools for a period of days using this feature and that is pretty incredible. You can see there's also a couple of circles here. Once again, the greenish circle, you press that and it activates this power system on the side and the little white circles, those are status lights in this area. But this is all your onboard power outlets back here, a very cool feature that could come in very handy and useful on the job site or anywhere else you might need power and it's not easy to find. And next up, I wanna discuss another interesting aspect of this truck, which is towing and hauling. Towing and hauling with an electric pickup truck. The whole concept just seems kind of unusual, and frankly, it is. But there are some cool points to mention with this truck. First, I wanna start with the basics. Now, like I said earlier, two different battery sizes available in this truck. The base level powertrain makes 425 horsepower and about 775 pound-feet of torque. Or you can upgrade to the higher capacity battery. That gives you about 565 horsepower and the same 775 pound-feet. And four-wheel drive is standard across the board on all of these F-150 Lightning models. Now, Ford has said the range with the base level powertrain is about 230 miles between charges, whereas with the upgraded battery, 300 miles between charges, which is a pretty healthy figure. And Ford came out and said they calculated these ranges based on a 1,000 pound payload which means that if you're really conservative and you don't have any load in your truck, you might be able to take it even further on a single charge, which is good news for people who want to go far. But anyway, let's talk payload and towing. With the small battery in this truck, your payload capacity is around 2,000 pounds. Upgrade to the larger battery for more power and more range and your payload capacity actually decreases to around 1,800 pounds. The reason for that is the battery's heavier, so it steals some of your payload capacity, but it does help you with towing capacity. The lower level battery has about a 7,700 pound towing capacity, which is reasonably respectable, but if you upgrade to the higher capacity battery, you'll get a 10,000 pound tow rating, which is a pretty good figure for a light duty truck like the F-150. But you might be wondering what happens if you actually wanna use this capacity. What happens to the range when you start towing? I asked Ford this and they answered me with one word, physics. At the end of the day, it's a lot like when you tow with a gas powered vehicle. It hurts your fuel economy. Well, in this case, it hurts your range and you're just gonna have to charge up more frequently. That's just the reality. But there is one cool thing that this truck does. It will learn your trailer. You can teach the truck how heavy your trailer is, how big it is. And once it knows those things, it can revise its range estimate to let you know how much range is left when you're towing your trailer. So you don't have to sit there and wonder if you're your range is off and how much you really have, your truck will actually change its range estimate based on the trailer you have plugged in. And it's the same deal with payload. This truck has a feature called onboard scales. You dump stuff in the bed and there's a scale that can actually measure how much weight is in the bed. And once again, your range will recompute based on what you're hauling around. If you're hauling a lot of weight, your range will go down and the truck will tell you exactly how much your range has decreased, which makes it easier to plan while you're driving. And by the way, since I'm talking about this truck and capacities and sizes, I should mention this is the only way it comes. With a five and a half foot bed, there's no long bed lightning. And with the crew cab, there's no single cab, there's no extended cab. You can only get it as a crew cab model with the shorter F-150 bed. That's the only way to get the lightning.
And next, we move inside the F-150 Lightning. And I gotta say, the thing that surprised me most about this truck, at least from an interior sizing perspective, is the interior dimensions are the same as the regular F-150. That's a big deal because the entire battery basically lives down here under the truck. And you would think that that battery would steal some space from the interior, but it doesn't. You open up the back door, you climb inside, and you can see there's a lot of rear seat room, just like you would expect from a regular F-150 Super Crew. You got a lot of space back here, and you can haul around adults comfortably in the back of this truck. It's pretty impressive. You even have the under seat storage capacity that the regular F-150 has. This little system of like rails that can keep stuff completely hidden and private, the battery doesn't eat that either. It's still there under the rear seat, so you can use it for stuff you want to keep out of the way. Pretty cool. But I'm going to move on pretty quickly from the back seat and up to the front in the new F-150 Lightning because there are a lot more quirks and features up here compared to the back. The back is fairly similar to a standard F-150, but up front there are some big and notable differences. Although when you first climb inside, generally it's about the same. Same basic seating position, same stuff in the same places, same general overall control layout. It looks like an F-150. And that means that it has the same cool trick transmission lever. When you're in park in the F-150, you press this little button and the gear lever folds itself down and into this little hole in the center console. Once it's there, you can fold back the center console storage lid and use it as a flat surface. Now you have a table for writing stuff or a place where you can put a laptop if you want to use it while you're sitting in the truck. When you're in park, that's a pretty cool touch. When you're done with this stuff, just fold it all up, press the button, and the gear selector folds right back into place. That is pretty neat, but that's not different from a regular F-150. The biggest difference in here is unquestionably the center screen, which is massive. This is Ford's 15 and a half inch center infotainment screen borrowed from the Mustang Mach-E and not yet available on any other F-150 models. Although I suspect this will eventually make its way into the other F-150, but for now it's only in the Lightning and it is huge. Of course, it does most of the stuff that you would expect from an infotainment system. You can see here the map, very large. You can move around and find the destination, that sort of stuff. At the bottom of this screen, you always have fixed in place your climate controls. So you can adjust your air temperature, your airflow, turn on your heated and cooled seats, all that stuff. It's always fixed here. Not quite as good for some people as having hard buttons, which are a little bit easier to feel and press, but at least this doesn't go anywhere. It is always displayed, the climate controls, so you pretty much know basically where everything is. You also have other functions in this screen as you'd expect, like your camera system, which has some high quality cameras displayed on this large screen. It's all pretty normal, except there are some interesting and new cool features. For one thing, uh, let's go to the drive modes. The Mach-E has weirdly named drive modes like unbridled to tie it into horses. This truck, it's a lot more straightforward. Ford told me they think truck people are more straightforward, functional, and so they gave them more functional drive modes. One interesting item here in the drive mode area, the locking differential is just a little icon you tap on the screen. In my old Land Rover, to get the locker on, you gotta <laughs> wrestle with this heavy lever in the center console. Now you just tap an icon and the diff is locked. This is the brave new world we're living in. And next up, another interesting item. You go into the access tab and from here, you can lower the bed. You tap this little icon and the bed will go down or you can raise or lower the frunk, the front trunk. You can press this and the front trunk lid goes up and then you have access to your front trunk or you can press it to close so you have access in your access tab of course no real surprise and next up also in this area you could go to the zone lighting tab which will turn on the zone lighting system that i mentioned before this is the white light space throughout the truck that you can turn on if you're like approaching a dark area at night you want to see what's around you you can turn on your zone lighting and see and from here you can control what you turn on you can turn it all on or individual zones front rear on the sides whatever in case you want to see what's around you. Next up, another cool item in these tabs is Pro Power On Board. This is the system of chargers that I showed you before in the front trunk and in the bed. Ford calls that Pro Power On Board, and you can switch it on or off from inside the truck if you want to, in addition to being able to switch it on or off from those buttons next to the actual outlets. One cool thing with this feature is that you can actually select a power reserve. In other words, you're using your truck to power some tool or some bouncy 
fancy castle for a birthday party, you can tell the truck exactly how much power you want to leave remaining so that you can still drive home. And then once the truck reaches that amount, it'll turn off the power outlets so it doesn't take all your power and you can't drive the truck. That is a pretty cool feature. But it's worth noting this center screen is not all functional stuff. It does have games built into it. There are several different games here, as you can see, and you can select one and then play these various different games. Just like in Tesla, Teslas have made this feature popular, having games in an infotainment system, and it's now starting to trickle into the other brands. Ford told me if you're sitting waiting for your son or daughter to end soccer practice or whatever, you can sit here outside with your truck playing games on your infotainment screen, which is a cool feature. You also have a sketch feature here, which will also be popular with kids. You can draw stuff if you want to, and you can save it to look at it later. So much for sticking your kids' drawings to the refrigerator with a magnet. Now you can save their drawings to your truck <laughs> that they've drawn on your center screen. It's all very futuristic. And next up, moving on to the other big screen in this interior, that would be the gauge cluster screen, which has a few interesting quirks and features. For one thing, this dial over to the left, that's not a tachometer because obviously that doesn't exist for this truck. Instead, it gives you some electric vehicle information. You have here, for example, your remaining battery percentage. That's this little part of the dial over here. You also have the amount of battery you can reach. So if the truck is very cold or very hot, maybe it can't use the whole battery and it'll let you know. You also have this little bar here which shows you your regen. So if you're slowing down, braking, and the truck is using that energy to regen the battery, it'll show you here that it's actually delivering energy back to the battery, which is kind of cool. Probably more interesting to me in this gauge cluster screen, there's temperature displays for both the battery and the electric motor. And I asked Ford, I said, okay, you have those displays there. What are you supposed to do with that? I said, well, maybe you're off-roading and it's hot and you can see that your stuff's starting to get hot and so maybe you stop for a little bit. I don't know, it seems really weird. I don't think I've ever seen an electric car that had temperature displays there because it's not really that helpful of information. But Ford told me that they have learned their truck buyers would prefer more information and not less. So it's there, temperature displays, just like you would have seen in a gas-powered car with a combustion engine. And next up, a few other interesting items in this interior. For one, this little button next to the gear lever, this little N with a circle, that will allow you to put the truck in neutral and leave it there even if you get out. Ford says the gear lever is designed to default to park if you open the door for obvious reasons so the truck doesn't roll away, but there are situations where you might want to leave it neutral, like if you're about to tow it or pull it somewhere, whatever, and if you press that button, you can leave it in neutral for 30 minutes before it will default to park. Another interesting item in here, uh, there's a power button. Not all electric cars have this. Some you just get inside, they sense you, you put it in drive and you drive off, but this one has a power button. Ford says their customers feel more comfortable with actually pressing a power button, turning it on in order to get started. And one other interesting item you'll see in here, this is a camera. And so is this on the other side of the dashboard, two cameras that are facing towards the driver. And the reason for that is Ford's Blue Cruise, which is sort of like their driver assist system, which will steer for you and brake and accelerate and all those things. The cameras are there to make sure that the driver is actually watching the road. And this is one of those systems where if you're watching the road, Blue Cruise can take over for you and actually do a lot of the driving once it monitors to make sure that your eyes are facing ahead. So that's where they've integrated the cameras in this truck. And finally, I want to briefly discuss trim levels in here. This is the Platinum model, the top spec high luxury version of this truck, which starts over $90,000. Pretty expensive truck, although these days trucks are pretty expensive. Now, like I said, the F-150 Lightning starts around $40,000, which is pretty affordable, but that's for a base level model called the Pro, and it doesn't come with much. Ford said vinyl seats and manually operated seats, that's what the Pro is going to have. It's really going to be a work truck. Most people will want to upgrade to at least the XLT model, which is sort of a mid-level trim at around $53,000 starting price. From there, you can also step up to a more luxurious Lariat trim level, or you can get into this the Platinum, the high-level luxury version. Now, it's also worth noting you can't get both batteries in all the trim levels. Just like a normal vehicle, they make it so you gotta spend more in order to be able to get more. So, the base model version of the Lightning only comes with the base battery, 425 horsepower and about 230 miles of range. Once you get into the XLT or the Lariat, they come standard with the base battery, but you can option up the bigger battery for 300 miles of range and 500 
565 horsepower. If you get the Platinum, you only get the top level battery. So those 300 miles, 565 horses, standard in the Platinum models. But there you go. That's a simple walk through the trim levels of the F-150 Lightning. And of course, there'll be different options that are and aren't available depending which trim level you select. But I'm not going to get into the specifics of that. You'll have to check it out on the F-150 Lightning Configurator. All right, so I couldn't drive the Lightning yet. That'll probably come in a few more months, but they are gonna let me ride in it for a short little ride around a little test track they've built. So uh, let's do it. Okay, we start off and obviously it's silent. That's sort of the way that this thing goes. Otherwise it feels a lot like an F-150. We're sitting up high, similar interior, similar driving position, but silent. All right, we're gonna do a little acceleration here and whoa. <laughs> <laughs> we don't have a lot of space. We're on a little uh, park in Austin that's sort of been converted to a little test track, but you can still feel it feels incredibly, incredibly quick. And that drives obviously with the numbers that we've been hearing, zero to 60 in low four second range, incredibly fast. A lot of people were upset that they were calling this the Lightning, even though it's not like the old Lightning, but it's still a serious performance truck. So it makes sense to some degree. One interesting thing I find just sitting here is it does seem a lot like an F-150, which is kind of their goal. You know, all these other electric trucks, they, they kind of went above and beyond in terms of craziness and insanity and performance and, and, and just ridiculousness. But this, the goal was to make it a little bit more familiar and a little bit more rational. And it certainly, it certainly feels that way from sitting in here. It may not have some of the sexy craziness that like the Hummer EV has and all that, but obviously, like I mentioned, a lot cheaper and more familiar and more rational. It'd be a lot easier for customers to make the switch to this vehicle. Okay, we're gonna try a little acceleration again. Just a quick one. <laughs> Like all electric cars, it is really, really, really quick from a get-go. It's amazing to think that they can do that in a vehicle the size of an F-150, but indeed they can. When you look at the power and the torque numbers, that seems to make sense. Overall, just sitting in here, it seems like a pretty reasonable attempt at an electric truck, especially going, you know, it doesn't seem like you're losing anything or really much from an F-150. And I'll be very, very curious in a couple of months when I'm able to drive this to sort of see how I think it feels out on the road, going full speed, highway speed, acceleration, that sort of thing. But for now, quick ride, it seems very promising. And so that's the new 2022 Ford F-150 Lightning. One of the coolest trucks on the planet and Ford's entrant into this world of electric pickup trucks. I can't wait to drive this thing in a few months, but for now, a thorough tour of its quirks and features will have to suffice. And I'm not really sure how many people are gonna be looking for an electric pickup truck, but the Lightning seems promising.